Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Fusion Industry Association. My name is Sid Cowley. I'm just finishing off my PhD at the University of York, and I've started a new job at the Fusion Industry Association affiliate member, DigiLab, as a Fusion Solution Consultant in AI. So today is Wednesday, the 24th of January, and I'm here to give you your weekly Fusion News Roundup. Stories today include, one, nuclear fusion needed to power future AI, OpenAI boss says. Two, Germany should go big on nuclear fusion energy. Three, nuclear fusion laser could shoot down space junk. Four, Fusion Industry Association sends letter on fusion budget to Secretary of Energy Granholm. And of course, as always, I'll have some bonuses at the end. One, nuclear fusion needed to power future AI, OpenAI boss says. Our first story today covers a discussion of AI and fusion at the World Economic Forum last week in Davos. Now, if you've been paying attention to Fusion News, you've probably heard about how AI can help the progress of Fusion over the past few years. And indeed, I work in exactly that field. But this story from The Independent turns the conversation on its head and talks instead about how Fusion can enable AI. So at Davos, the CEO of OpenAI and the creator of ChatGPT, Sam Altman, discuss the intense power requirements that large language models such as ChatGPT are going to need in the future. Currently, ChatGPT handles hundreds of millions of queries per day, consuming the same amount of power as 33,000 US homes. So if large, data-heavy machine learning models and these large language models are going to become more pervasive in everyday life, Sam argues there's no way to meet the electricity demand without some energy breakthrough. According to Sam, that motivates us to go invest more in fusion. And Sam is backing up his sentiments with action. He has personally invested 375 million US dollars in the fusion company and FIA member Helion Energy. And OpenAI uses servers from Microsoft, who, if you'll remember, have signed a purchase agreement for fusion energy from Helion. Now, I personally love stories like this. It reminds us what a technologically advanced, marvelous time we live in, as we're able to unironically talk about the most advanced artificial intelligence models of the future being powered by the same thing that powers the stars over our heads. I just think it's brilliant. Two, Germany should go big on nuclear fusion energy. Our second story today comes from the Financial Times and is an opinion piece by John Thornhill on fusion energy in Germany. Now in the article, Thornhill discusses why Germany could be a sleeping giant for fusion, as it's currently a hub for research and engineering and has had significant energy challenges since committing to shut down its fission power plants. So the article discusses that now is a great time for Germany to double down on fusion. After all, fusion is going through a historic phase of scientific development, with the National Ignition Facility in the US achieving net gain in 2022. But what's more, the private fusion industry is now booming, and there are now 43 companies across the globe pursuing fusion. So the article emphasizes that Germany is part of this growth, since Germany is home to FIA members Proxima Fusion and Marvel Fusion, two key players in the fusion industry pursuing fusion through stellarators and lasers respectively. Now, last September, you might remember that the German government also promised to invest 1 billion euros over the next five years in fusion. However, the article questions whether this commitment is enough, and many in the German fusion industry are keen to emphasize the strong investment needed for Germany to be a leader in fusion. For example, Proxima says it would need 500 million euros to finance the construction of a Stellarator power plant. Moreover, the COO of Marvel Fusion, Heike Freund, doubts whether the current level of funding is enough to compete with other countries, stating, the Americans set a mission of 10 years and then do everything they can to reach for it. So overall, the article raises a very good point. Germany is now one of the leaders in fusion, but will it continue to be as other countries massively step up their efforts? Three, nuclear fusion laser could shoot down space junk. So our next story comes from The Independent, though it kind of sounds like it came straight out of a science fiction novel. But it's real, I swear. It focuses on the Japanese company and FIA member X-Fusion, founded in 2021 with the aim of developing lasers for inertial fusion and other industrial applications. 
And it turns out one of these applications is the handling of space debris, an increasingly dangerous problem. There are roughly 100 trillion pieces of satellites orbiting the planet, and this massive amounts of debris could damage other satellites or hinder future rocket launches. And one of the potential solutions to this issue of space junk is to use lasers to locate and then move the pieces of debris, sometimes referred to as a laser broom. Sounds great, but how does it work? Well, the radiation pressure from the ground-based lasers may be able to move small, roughly 10 centimeter sized pieces of debris, or even slow them down enough so that they can return to the Earth's atmosphere and disintegrate. And though X-Fusion was founded to develop lasers for fusion, they think the two applications may have some similarities. X-Fusion chief executive, Kazuki Matsuo said that the power of a laser for destroying space junk is an order of magnitude lower than for nuclear fusion, but they share technical challenges, such as controlling them via special mirrors. So it seems like the diode pump solid state lasers that are a core technology for X-Fusion may have other applications far beyond energy generation on Earth. Now, articles like this are an excellent example of how the fusion industry doesn't exist in isolation and technology developed for fusion can have applications in the most incredible places. Four, Fusion Industry Association sends letter on fusion budget to Secretary of Energy Granholm. Our final story today comes from our own Fusion Industry Association and covers a letter the FIA sent to the US Secretary of Energy Granholm on the 11th of January. The letter expressed support for a variety of moves that the US has made towards fusion, including the $1 billion DOE budget request for 2024, including making fusion a priority in Biden administration's bold decadal vision, and reworking the Fusion Energy Sciences, or FES, program. However, the letter also highlights that more urgency is needed if commercial fusion is to be achieved in the coming decade. Also, there needs to be more effort from the U.S. if it needs to stay a leader in fusion. In the letter, Andrew Holland said that the U.S., historically a leader, risks losing ground without strategic investments and a sense of urgency to meet this moment. Leadership from the DOE is pivotal in guiding the FES program's transition to align with the private sector and close these technological gaps for a decadal timeline. Right, well, that's all for our main stories today. For our first bonus, we've got news from STEP, or the Spherical Tokamak for Energy Production, the UK government's fusion pilot plant. And the news is that STEP has had permission from a local district council for the first temporary building to be developed on site. To me, this is a really exciting piece of news because it marks the beginning of STEP transitioning from a purely theoretical and design project to an actual site with actual buildings infrastructure, and presence. For our second bonus today, we've got the announcement of the Fusion Industry Association Annual Policy Conference. So this conference will take place from March 20th to 21st this year and will be held in Washington, DC. The conference is a great opportunity for representatives from the government, science, and industry to come together and discuss pathways to fusion commercialization. Early registration for the conference ends in February. Right, well that's all for Fusion News this week. Thanks so much as always for watching. Uh, we really appreciate the support on these videos. And of course, if you want to know anything further about any of the videos discussed, the links will be in the description. That's it, see you next time.